2025 is going to be an awesome year for video editing on Linux, especially open source video editing. OpenShot and Kdenlive both recently announced new versions, which have a lot of great features being added, and the future of these apps look even brighter, especially with something Kdenlive recently teased on their blog, and based on what was just added to OpenShot. I mean, I'm excited for this. Hi, I'm Michael, and I make videos about open source software, so naturally, news about open source video editors easily pique my interest. So let's start things off with OpenShot. So OpenShot 3.3 has been released and there is a lot of cool stuff in here. First of all, we're gonna talk about the UI. It's not the biggest thing we're gonna talk about. I'm super excited about the next thing, but it is very important to have a good looking UI. And Cosmic Dusk is the new theme and it is a much better, it's a big improvement to the previous OpenShot UI. Now, I think there are some still ways to improve it here and there. I mean, I'm a graphics designer, so I obviously, I would have some notes there, but I do think it is vastly improved from the other version. So that's very cool to see. The biggest thing is easily the ripple editing improvements. So ripple editing is very powerful. It's very useful. And a lot of people kind of require it. So for those who don't know, ripple editing is a lot of different things, but ripple delete is probably the most important piece. We'll get to that in a second. We have ripple select, which lets you quickly select all items that are at the right of a clicked position. So if you hold alt and then click, it will select what you clicked on and also everything after it, which is awesome. Gives you a lot more control of how you manipulate the timeline. And then there's also the ripple slicing, which now supports multiple layer selections and realigns the timeline as you do it, which is great. But like I said, the most important thing is ripple delete because a lot of people actually think this is critical and they will not use anything that doesn't have it. And I've actually seen videos where people were testing out open source editors, then not finding Ripple Delete and just giving up at that point. So this is really important. So what does Ripple Delete do? Well, normally when you delete a clip that you have done cuts on, it will leave a gap in the timeline for where that clip was. Ripple Delete will automatically adjust so that it doesn't leave any gaps. So it pulls everything behind it forward however much of the clip that you have, however much of time that clip actually took. So it's really cool. And they've also uh, done some keyboard shortcuts to include in the ripple delete function. So you hold shift delete and that will activate the ripple delete, which is very, very cool to see. They've also done a lot of improvements for zooming. So the zoom slider enhancements include uh, frame boundary banding, draggable selections, and many more. They've also simplified the handling of large batches of clips with better snapping and faster operations for the drag and drop functionality for like multiple files. They've added a new recovery menu that seamlessly recovers projects for uh, auto saves files with time-based recovery stuff, which is very nice. They've also made it so that when you click on effects or keyframes, it now auto opens the properties dock for more intuitive editing so you can get automatically showing the properties. You can now easily match your project's profile to imported file formats for streamlined workflows. And the frame boundary support uh, is now improving the uh, timeline precision so you can have alternating color bands and sharing exact edits. There's also a lot of bug fixes. So the Windows 11 auto compatibility has been fixed. So they fixed a crucial audio, audio sync and preferences issue caused by Windows 11's uh, 24H2 update. And uh, for those who are using Windows 11, I'm sorry, but you can now use OpenShot with it better. Also, there's a color picker fix on Linux. So this, the pick screen color now works reliably for effects like chroma keying and stuff like that on Linux, which is awesome. And they've also done some improvements for uh, exporting profiles. So the dropdowns and preferences now behave consistently, fixing issues with improper selections. You can see the rest of the bug fixes in the release notes that I'll link in the show notes. They've also done a lot of improvements for performance and usability. So like there's batch updates. This is basically like mass updates such as dragging. Hundreds of clips are now significantly faster to do. You can also have better performance with the undo and redo operations on large projects. So if you have massive things that you're working on and you want to undo something, it previously was taking quite a while and they've improved the performance a lot on that. So that is great to see. And they've also made it possible to select and scroll uh, imported files. So imported files are auto-selected and centered in the project files view for quick access, which is really good. And not a lot of editors do that because sometimes you have to figure out where the files are that you just imported. Now, in some editors, you can scroll around manually and it'll be highlighted. And that's 
good enough, but automatically scrolling to it, much better. They've also fixed some in keyboard shortcuts, which is great. So they've standardized some of their shortcuts for better usability and consistency, which I love to see. And they've also made some improvements for the dock widgets, as well as the export screen has now uh, benefited from improvements like the start and end frame values refresh automatically, and also advanced settings retain user preferences. So if you want to do multiple exports, you can actually have it retained, which is always nice. OpenShot is looking better and better these days. For a while, I used to see OpenShot as just a basic editor for those who want to do simple tasks like cuts and trims and stuff like that. And now, though, it's looking very, very promising. There's a lot of cool stuff, that, especially the Ripple Delete. I mean, that is one of the most important pieces, in my opinion, of this release and all the other Ripple features as well. It has me second guessing my previous thoughts and I need to revisit this project because Ripple is such a critical feature that basically everybody wants it and those who don't, uh, don't know about it. <laughs> Although I kind of use it both here and there. I don't always use Ripple Delete. I do a combination of both. So that's very cool. Uh, but I'm excited to try out OpenShot 3.3 and if you'd like to learn more, then you'll find links in the show notes. The Caden Live team have announced the latest release of their open source video editor with Caden Live 24.12, and there are many new features and improvements for this release. The Caden Live team have been just crushing it lately because 24.12 has crushed some bugs and also added some really good features. So this release has a lot of bug fixes with like resolving crashes and audio capture, effect zones, high DBI rendering and subtitle editing. They've also refined the rotoscoping, the proxies, and also project management workflows, as well as fixed some laggy stuff with like the XF, uh, XF orientation issues and also some archiving problems. Uh, they've also added fail safes for invalid project files and script names, which is very nice. So some of the new features is that it's now possible to resize multiple timeline items at the same time as well as being able to uh, do single frame mixing. So the same track transitions, that sort of stuff. Very cool. And you can now quickly add markers and guidelines in specific categories. Now, what does that mean by categories? It's kind of like the way they do labeling and coloring for the different guides. So you can create a category that has a specific color attached to it. And you can say, you know, give me this color in that kind of way. Now, this is very powerful because for those who don't use markers and guidelines in video editing, you should. They're very helpful. I do it all the time. Literally every single video I ever make has mar lots of markers and guides. You should definitely do that. Uh, but this is really nice to have even more uh, quicker ways to do it. The next thing that they added is a new shortcut to, well, I'm not really sure what it means because it says shift delete to extract clips from the timeline. Now, I don't know what they mean by extracting the clip from the timeline because the only thing I can think of is ripple delete, but they don't say ripple delete. And if it is ripple delete, they should say that. This is editor, Michael, letting you know that I have an update for this particular news. And that is the extract clip timeline does appear to be a ripple delete functionality. I talked to some people in the Caden Live group and they said that it is yes, more or less a ripple delete. I'm not sure what it is less or more of, but it does seem to be a ripple delete, which is awesome because that means everything that I already said about the open shot support of ripple delete is also applicable to Caden Live, which is fantastic because not having an option for open source editors to do that before and now having more than one is just great. Although I will say that they need to make a note somewhere in the settings, keyboard shortcut configuration options. There should be a way to find that Ripple is there. The reason is because people will search there for that. I've seen videos where people absolutely do that, but apparently Premiere Pro and Avid call it Extract, Final Cut Pro and Resolve calls it Ripple Delete. There's a little bit of a terminology conflict. So I feel like if Caden Live wants to avoid that, they can just add a note somewhere that says Ripple inside of the configuration. So they've also done a lot of subtitle stuff. So they have advanced substation alpha subtitle support or AS, uh, no, that's not true, is it? <laughs> so they've done a lot of stuff for subtitles, including adding support for advanced substation alpha or an, an acronym that you can read for yourself. <laughs> like that's genuinely what it's called. Anyway, 
This is a widely used text-based format renowned for its flexibility and in hi creating highly styled and customized subtitles. These subtitles support advanced features such as font family. I don't know if you can read this. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm seeing. These subtitles support advanced features such as font family, size and color, uh, text outlines and shadows, alignment and positioning, scaling and rotations, margins and spacing and effects and all sorts of stuff, including masking and other enhancements, which is very cool. These sound very good. I love all of those possibilities for the subtitles. Very cool to see. But that acronym... <laughs> There's also a new subtitle manager for uh, integrated style management. So there's the files section, so you can create, import, export there. There's also the layers and content section, which lets you create and remove uh, subtitle tracks and also apply styling to those tracks. Then there's the style section where you can, of course, uh, create and manage styles. And then, of course, the info section, which will display details about your subtitles. There's a new subtitle style editor, which is kind of similar to the titler inside of Caden Live, which gives you a lot of options to control the look and feel of it with the, the shadow and the outline and the text color and all that sort of stuff. So you can have like comprehensive styling options for you. And they also did animated subtitles. So it has banner and scroll effects so that are basically allowing you to do it from left to right or up, to, uh, up and down. And this is cool uh, that you can have this, but I'm not really sure how helpful that would be. I guess maybe if you're doing like a lyric video for a song, that might be cool. But I would also be more specific about how I did those kinds of things. So I'm not sure the value, but definitely the next one where it has the different like word being colorized. So basically uh, as a karaoke style where it will color the word as it gets to it. And I like that a lot. Uh, but the other one, not sure how valuable because like if you're talking very fast, would it just like scroll a lot? Like just like credits across your face? I don't know. They've also improved the speech to text stuff. So this is really cool because you'll have a better, more reliable experience with it. So they've polished it for smoother uh, and more just re rendering and that sort of stuff. So they've improved the GPU translation and uh, threading issues. They've also updated whisper settings and virtual environment packages, making it just an overall better experience for the speech to text functions with whisper. They've also improved uh, keyframe rendering for like bounce, circular and exponential types of keyframes, which is very nice. And they've also added a new color correction effect with HSL primaries and HSL range. 2025 is looking very good for open source video editing and video editing on Linux in general. I'm so happy to see these advancements and stuff like that for these editors. And I can't wait to try it out. But there is something else that is coming in a future release of Caden Live that I have to show you. It's not out yet. It's a preview, but it's very cool. And that is automatic masking of elements inside of your video. This is great. So this is using AI to create these object masks to remove the background of theoretically anything, just as long as you do the proper layout of the path and to create the mask and that sort of stuff. So if you scroll down here, you'll see this an example of this where they have animated the dinosaur with the background removed. And this is just fantastic. So if whenever this comes out, I can't wait to play with it because this is something that professional editors or mostly proprietary editors would have, you know, in some cases. Uh, like DaVinci Resolve has this for sure. And I would love to see this in Caden Live. So I can't wait to try this out. I, they haven't said when it's coming, but automatic masking to remove backgrounds. I mean, I can't wait. I hope that Caden Live feature comes out sooner rather than later. But there's so much cool stuff happening for video editors in 2025 that I, I, I can't wait to learn more and to try out all these different stuff and if you want to learn, if you want to check out the stuff that you can right now, you'll find links in the show notes. But if you want to check out this video, I don't know what it is because I wasn't really planning to promote a video right now. So whatever YouTube thinks you should check out, that's, this is what this is.